Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moinuddin. Students, in this video we are going to discuss about electrothermal atomizers, which are also known as graphite furnace. So electrothermal, actually these are the source of atomization. So whenever we discuss atomic spectroscopy or whatever type of atomic spectroscopy we do opt, the first step is common in all of them and that is atomization. So for atomization, we need some atomizer. And we use different atomizers like inductively coupled plasma, flame, direct current plasma, electric spark or electric arc sources. And electrothermal, these are also the atomizers which are frequently being used for atomization. So in this video, we will specifically discuss the electrothermal atomizers. Let's start with historical development. Because if we see the history of electrothermal atomizers deeply, then we can find a large number of modifications which are, which are going to happen to reach towards the final shape which is being practiced these days. So in 1908, King, generally regarded as the first worker in this field, who used an electrically heated tubular furnace. So King is regarded as the first one who started this technique in 1908. And what did he do actually? He was using an electrically heated tubular furnace. So there was a furnace in the tubular shape was being heated electrically. Then Alvov is another name in this field who published his work in 1959. Alvov is another name who was working on the same technique and he published his, his work in 1959 and what did he do actually? His sample was used to be applied to the tip of carbon electrode which was introduced to, into a cylindrical heated furnace. So sample which was to be analyzed, it was being applied to an electrode which was made up of carbon and this carbon electrode was further introduced into, uh, into a cylindrical heated furnace. Then there was a pre-treatment as well, pre-heat actually. At first sample was preheated using a powerful DC arc. And sample was actually it was preheated by using some uh, DC arc before introduction into the furnace. Later on there were found some modifications in heating system as these were replaced by resistive heating of electrodes. So electrodes uh, were started heating resistively. Then we'll see uh, the dimensions of the graphite tube so the tube which was being used it was 30 to 50 millimeter in length 2.5 to 5 millimeter was its internal diameter while external diameter was 6 millimeter and this tube actually it didn't act as an atomizer so atomization was not going to happen in this tube actually so this tube was not responsible for atomization. Uh, then what was the purpose of the tube? Actually, it was behaving as an atom cell, hindering the loss of atoms. So actually it was capturing the sample atoms for further absorption or fluorescence phenomena, but it was not responsible for atomization phenomena. Then where atomization was being uh, happening actually, so the sample electrode actually it was responsible for atomization. Then both tube and electrode were heated via step down transformer. So step down by using the step down transformer both of these were heated. Then Alvov apparatus actually it it didn't get much popularity rather it was criticized as is what it as it was not easily manageable so that's why it couldn't get 
much popularity. After Elvov, another name is Massman. So in 1967, Massman described a heated graphite furnace in which no electrode was used. That is, tube was being used as a furnace. So Massman used a graphite furnace and it was electrodeless, mean there was no electrode and tube was serving as a furnace mean now atomization will go going to be happen in this tube so sample was micro pipeted sample was being introduced by using some micro pipet directly into the tube into the furnace and the dimensions of the furnace were tube were that was 55 mm long internal diameter was 6.5 millimeter wall thickness was 1.5 millimeter and sample was being introduced via a small orifice small hole and the diameter of the hole was 2 millimeter so these are the complete dimensions of the tube which was being used by Massman using a power supply of 400 ampere at 10 volt the furnace could be heated to 26 degree centigrade 2600 degree centigrade in few seconds so by using this arrangement within seconds uh, two was able to reach the temperature 2600 degree centigrade another design which became popular for a while but abundant later on and this was West rod at Moiser and first time it was reported in 1969 so what are the specifications of uh, this design so actually no tube was being used in it so there was no tube in this design so sample was applied directly to an electrically heated graphite filament so there was a graphite filament and sample was directly applied to this filament and what were the dimensions of this graphite filament so it was 2 millimeter in diameter and the length was 40 millimeter then further it was supported by water cooled electrodes definitely to provide heat so it was able to reach at temperature between the limits 2000 to 3000 degree centigrade within 5 seconds but as mentioned earlier this design also couldn't get much popularity so it was abundant and now we will see the electrothermal atmosphere which are being used these days so first of all let's see the introduction so today's electrothermal atmosphere were appeared in the market around 1970. So these were appeared in market around in 1970. These provide enhanced sensitivity. So the sensitivity is very much high as the entire sample is atmoised in a short period. So the sample which we introduced into, uh, into the instrument into the furnace that is wholly at moist and at moist in a very short period so actually if this thing has been explained uh, mentioned over here in comparison to the flame at moisture you know in the flame we know, uh, we use nebulizer uh, we do uh, the process of nebulization and we have seen that when we use premix chamber burner so generally 90 to 95 percent of the sample is wasted so this point has been mentioned in reference in comparison to that 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 is the entire sample here is atomized and it is atomized in a very short period so that is why the sensitivity of the technique is very much high then residence time so average residence time resi residence time is the time uh, it is the duration between what do you say when we inject our sample or to when we get the results so this time 
this uh, this is called residence time so average residence time of atoms in the optical path is a second or more so you can say within seconds the analysis is complete actually then samples are introduced into a confined volume that is why these are included in discrete atmosphere we know that atmosphere can be divided into two types continuous atmosphere and discrete atmosphere in continuous atmosphere we have to supply sample in the form of continuous stream so there is no fixed volume required for those techniques and in those techniques the atmosphere include actually the flame atmosphere and inductively coupled plasma but when we talk about the electrothermal atmosphere so we need not to use a continuous stream of our sample actually the sample is introduced into confined volume into a fixed volume so that is why these atmospheres form into the type which is called discrete atmospheres and then these are used for atomic absorption and atomic fluorescence measurement so electrothermal atmosphere it is the source of atmosphereization so after the atmosphereization of the sample so there could occur the phenomena of absorption or fluorescence whatever we are using the technique so these atmospheres are being practiced in these two types of phenomena that is absorption and fluorescence measurement a few microliters of sample are deposited in the furnace by syringe or auto sampler so as mentioned earlier the sample is introduced into atmosphere in a confined volume in a fixed volume and volume that is actually in microliters so it is actually very small quantity so this quantity of sample is deposited into furnace by the use of syringe or auto sampler so here we can see this is the syringe specially designed microliter syringes uh, which are used to introduce sample into electrothermal atmosphere so whether we can use this syringe or in the more sophisticated instrument there has been attached an auto sampler so auto sampler looks like this so actually we can put a large number of sample vials over here and we can give the command to the instrument by using the software and then instrument that will uh, that will upload the sample uh, that will inject the sample into the instrument by itself so these are the ways by which samples can be deposited into the furnace after introduction of sample into the furnace next there is a program series of heating occur so there are different heating events which occur inside the furnace which may be categorized as uh, into three steps and they are drying ashing and atmosphereization so first step is drying during drying step the solvent is evaporated at a relatively low temperature usually at 110 degree centigrade so if sample is introduced in the form of solution so first step will definitely be the drying in which the solvent of the sample is evaporated and the temperature usually reaches in this step around 110 degree centigrade then after drying second step is ashing the temperature of the furnace is then increased to 300 to 1200 degree centigrade and at this temperature all the organic matter is ashed so if there is present carbon in the sample so that is converted into carbon dioxide and the hydrogen present inside that is converted into water I means sample is completely ashed over here and the third step is atmosphereization so after ashing the temperature is rapidly increased to 2000 
to 3000 degree centigrade and at this high temperature the sample actually it gets vaporized and further it get at moist so at moisture actually it gets complete at this temperature 2000 to 3000 degree centigrade so the atomization of the sample occurs in a period of a few milliseconds to seconds so here we can see that the atomization process this complete in a very short span of time and that is within a few milliseconds to seconds then after atomization the absorption or fluorescence of the sample vapors is then measured in the region immediately above the heated surface before the vapors can escape the furnace and after atomization we record the various phenomena whatever we are studying whether it's absorption or fluorescence and then finally vapors escape out of the furnace so this is the whole process actually now we will see the atmosphere design so commercial electrothermal atmosphere are small electrically heated tubular furnaces so electrothermal atmosphere which are available commercially actually these are very much small tubular furnaces and these are heated electri electrically by the use of electricity the cross-sectional view of a commercial electrothermal atmosphere is shown in the figure so we can see here the cross-sectional view of electrothermal atmosphere and this is the view over here so atomization occur in a cylindrical graphite tube so atomization actually it happens in this cylindrical graphite tube so here you can see the graphite tube which is cylindrical in shape and that is open at both ends and this tube actually it is open at the both ends and it has a central hole for sample introduction and here we can see in the center in the middle there is a hole from where the sample is introduced into this tube by the use of a uh, microliter syringe or auto sampler and here are the dimensions of the tube the tube is about 5 cm long and has internal diameter of about 1 cm. So length of this tube is about 5 cm with an internal diameter of about 1 cm. The interchangeable graphite tube fits tightly so the tube is interchangeable mean if there happens any problem uh, due to overheating it may get be incinerated or damaged so we can interchange the tube from the fresh the new the right tube so the tube is interchangeable so the interchangeable graphite tube fits tightly into a pair of cylindrical graphite electrical contacts located at the two ends of the tube so at the two ends of the tube there are present graphite electrical contacts so there is a pair actually one is here and other is here so graphite electrical contacts and the purpose of these is to provide heat these contacts are held in a water-cooled metal housing to prevent them definitely from damage so these electrical contacts are kept in a water-cooled metal housing then an external stream of inert gas baths the tube and prevents it from being incinerated so to avoid avoid tube from incineration there is a stream of an inert gas maybe argon so that flows externally like this so it flows externally and it baths the tube and the purpose behind is to prevent the tube from incineration so 
this is the uh, this is the function of the stream or uh, uh, from this uh, for this stream of inert gas then there is another stream of inert gas so a second internal stream and that is the internal stream so it flows into the two ends of the tube and out the central sample port so the second stream of inert gas it comes from uh, the opening of, of the two sides from the two side opening so it enters from here and this one enters from here and it get out from the central port from the sample port and what is the function of this second stream of inert gas is so this stream not only excludes the air so it helps to remove air from the tube but also serves to carry away vapors generated from the sample matrix during the first two heating stages so we have seen earlier the first two stages they are the what do you say vaporization drying and ashing steps so during the first step if there are generated some sort of vapors then this second stream helped to remove these vapors from the tube as well then there is a platform used in the graphite furnace and this platform is called Elvov platform so actually we are talking about this one so this is the platform or if we uh, this is another view so this is the platform which is used in the graphite furnace and this is called Elvov platform so what is the function of this uh, Elvov platform is the platform is made up of graphite so it is also made up of graphite and is located beneath the sample entrance port so it has been kept just beneath the sample entrance port means the injected sample actually it comes onto this Elvov platform the sample is evaporated and ashed on this platform so the various heating steps all of those happen actually on this platform when tube temperature is raised rapidly atomization is delayed since the sample is no longer in contact directly with the furnace wall so what happens actually we inject the sample and sample comes onto this platform then tube is heated so atomization process is quite delayed because the sample is not directly in touch with the furnace wall so as a result atomization occur in the environment in which temperature is not changing as rapidly as in the other atomizers like flame or inductively coupled plasma so what is the benefit of all of this the results or the signals which we get actually they are more reproducible so this is another advantage of electrothermal atomizer so after atomizer design let's see the applications of electrothermal atomizer so these are particularly useful when sample amount is very small or when matrix is dilute or volatile so especially this technique is being used when the quantity of sample is very much small or very minute this criteria often applied to clinical samples so in clinical samples generally we have very small amount of sample so actually a pinprick sample mean very little sample of blood produces only 50 to 100 cubic millimeter but it is sufficient for the complete analysis using a graphite furnace so it's a big application of electrothermal atmoiser then an interesting application is the placing of weight solid samples directly into the furnace for ultra trace analysis of volatile elements so another application of electrothermal atmoiser is by the use of it we can also analyze solid samples directly and then advantages of electrothermal atmoisers so first one is increased sensitivity 
Electrothermal atomizers show increased sensitivity in comparison to the flame atomizers. And this decreased sensitivity of flame atomizers, it could be due to poor nebulization efficiency because in flame atomizers, we use nebulizers and their efficiency is generally 5 to 10 percent. So that is why we can see the sensitivity of flame atomizers are quite low as compared to flame, uh, electrothermal atomizers. Because in electrothermal atomizers, we don't use any nebulizer as the sample already being injected is in very small quantity. So that is why the sensitivity of electrothermal atomizers is quite much increased. Second advantage, advantage is decreased sample size. So sample required is in very small quantity actually. Very small sized sample can be analyzed by using electrothermal atomizer. The minimum requirement for flame or plasma instrument is 500 cubic millimeter and it is the minimum requirement. While if we talk about electrothermal atomizer, the sample size ranges from 1 to 100 cubic millimeter and typically it is taken in 20 to 30 cubic millimeter range. So this is sufficient for electrothermal atomizer. So this is another advantage of this technique. Then another one is solid sample analysis. So solid samples can be placed directly into these atomizers often using purpose-made accessories. So there are special accessories. By using them, we can directly introduce the solid samples into electrothermal atomizers. While if we talk about the plasma or flame, the only way to analyze solid samples in plasma instrument, so if we introduce solid sample into them by the use of laser ablation, in which we vaporize our solid sample by the use of some laser beam or by electrothermal vaporization or even by direct insertion by the use of some special probes the solid samples are directly introduced into plasma so solid samples and all these things are being performed in electrothermal atomizer which is an advantage of this Another advantage is cheapness of operation. So operation is quite cheap, it's, it's not much costly and that is due to low consumption of argon on graphite tubes and electricity as compared to the consumption of gases in flame and plasma instruments. So the process is not much costly. The next advantage is safety of operation. Explosive gases and flames may be avoided in this technique, in this atomizer. The fumes produced here are less toxic. Then enclosed use means that the radioactive samples may be handled. So radioactive samples may be handled uh, quite easily uh, with safety. There is no harm, there is no toxic effect of them. Then another advantage is unattended operation. We need not to stuck together with the instrument. And how it's possible? By the use of auto sampler, an unattended overnight operation is also possible. So if we have an auto sampler, then we need not to stuck with the instrument. We can put our all samples, 30 to 50 or whatsoever, and we can start our instrument and that may perform the whole operation for us for the whole night. So it's, uh, it's very much easy or very much beneficial. Then there are some disadvantages of this technique too. Let's see them. First of all, interferences. Though a large number of interferences related problems have been reduced since last 10 years, with this electrothermal atomizers, but these still suffer more interferences than even nitrous oxide acetylene flame. So we undergo some interferences 
related issues with this technique. Then another disadvantage could be the cost. A good instrument with auto sampler is an expensive instrument and its cost could be within 50,000 to 60,000 pounds. And if we talk about the flame spectrometer, so a simple very basic flame spectrometer that may cost around 10,000 pounds or more. So a good sophisticated electrothermal atomizer instrument it may cost too high. Then another disadvantage could be the complicated programs. So optimizing the conditions of electrothermal atomization where it will be performed uh, at uh, ideally so it is far more complicated as compared to flame atomizer. Another disadvantage could be the small sample size. This point we have already discussed in advantages too but it may cause some problems as well and what are these? The small sample size it may create problems like in sample handling to handle some a very small sample it could be problematic and homogeneity of the sample this could also be the issue for while while handling the small size samples the next disadvantage is single element analysis so traditionally with this atomizer only one element can be analyzed at, at a time and if we talk about inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy and inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. So with these techniques simultaneous multi-elemental analysis so this is possible. So this could also be another disadvantage of the technique. So dear students this was all about today's lecture about electrothermal atomizers. Hope you did understand it well. So if you did so then like my video and if you didn't subscribe my channel yet then subscribe it right now to get in touch with my upcoming videos. So thanks for watching. Thank you very much.